Maman, you're home. Of course I am. And I brought someone that will bring some order to this chaos. Major Felix Hagen, he may hold the rank of Major in the British Army, but I question his authority here at all. The British... Um... I'm trying to think. Most of the Poirot stories are 1930s. He fought in World War... I think he fought in World War One. So that puts us to... Um, I'm just looking at his outfit and it's just like, that, that can't be the British Army. Um, I know in the Napoleonic era, the engineers were blue. I don't know how how much that continued, how far that continued. Um, I do know, I think at some point everyone was in red, and then obviously you get the khaki uniform being a key thing just before World War I. Um, this is probably, what is this, turn of the century? So just 19, just 1900s. Um, yeah, I think he should be in all red, and he's not wearing, I don't think he's wearing, he's, I don't think he's got the insignia of a major. I don't think. So, yeah, that's annoying. In police matters, I am the authority, this is my investigation, I will not have Madame dictating the results any longer. Right, hang on. So, why a British major? She's Belgian. This is Belgium. Why is the British army in Belgium? What's going on? Major, I can assure you, I have this situation under control. From what I have heard, you are far from it. Was that an American accent? Why is he wearing blue? That is no. The missing bracelet has been found, and the guilty party has been identified. I am well aware that the maid servant was behind it all. And yet, I see her standing as free and innocent as you and me. Oh no, it is a British accent. Have they just picked a random... Right, no, I'm looking this up. I'm going to get my phone. I'm looking this up. British Army Blue Uniform. Mm, don't think that's British Army. Okay. That's not helpful. This is a phone, so I can't look it up. Yeah, full dress is red. Um. Okay, so the it looks like maybe maybe the engineers would have still won blue. Um. Oh, light, light cavalry regiments and the Royal Artillery, Artillery have worn blue since the 18th century. Um, uh, so it could be Royal Artillery. I think that shade of blue, I think normally it's lighter for the, for the light cavalry. Uh, like a sky blue. More than a dark blue. Um... Okay, so there's a few... Oh, no, actually, it could be a dark blue. But actually, darker than that. So it's possible, but I don't think... He, he's just got random... He's got random medals. I am sure Madame Van den Bosch has informed you of her suspicions, but I'm afraid it was merely speculation. Excuse me? At some point, these two... Like, at, the, like at this point... Yeah, you're, you're veering towards... Yeah. After conducting a full investigation... The evidence and facts led me to deduce. No. Mademoiselle Florette could not have taken it as she was in town most of the morning, including the time the bracelet was taken. I certainly hope you are not accusing my daughter of... I didn't mention your flipping daughter. Oh my goodness. What's the point? <laughs> What's the point of having two choices in answers when you pick one and it goes, Oh, you picked the other one. I didn't mention your daughter. I'm sorry, Maman. He's right. Florette is innocent. 
I just wanted to show you. Shh, girl. I will not have you guilted into taking the blame for that sticky-fingered girl. Madame van den Bosch refuses to acknowledge even a fraction of what is really taking place. I shall not let this continue any longer. Uh, it doesn't matter what I pick, because it's going to be the second one. <laughs> Um, perhaps it would benefit to hear Mademoiselle Angeline's. Perhaps it would benefit you to remember you are nothing more than a simple officer of the law. Okay, it did actually get the right, it replied to the right one there, that's good. I was a Poirot. A word. Madame van den Bosch was forced to make her way to inform me, alone, I might add, of the goings on at the house today. Uh, she was not forced. Major. With all due respect, she was impeding the investigation. She wasn't forced! <laughs> I w yeah, she just suddenly walked out. This may be how some officers act in the city, but here we show respect to our citizens. You are an officer of the law and should act as such. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? This is Belgium! Insubordination like this will not be tolerated. Insubordination to whom? Like, did they go? He's an officer of the law. Officer. Army. Oh my god. Right. Oh. Wow. Wow, this is, this is not well written. So a member of the British Army, who's probably wearing the wrong uniform, is angry at a Belgian police officer who is a member of the Belgian police for not following the orders of a civilian. Oh, what is going on? As the ranking officer, I have conducted my investigation and... Ranking officer? <laughs> you are an auxiliary officer. You have little authority over anyone, let alone a major. You would be wise to remember who is close friends with your commanding officer. Wait. Wait, what? I thought we were a member of the police. What's going on? If I'm a member of the military... If I'm a member of the military, what am I doing investigating anything? What's going on? This is so bizarre. Out of what I have heard of your past in the city, I'm sure he would look upon today's events as another failure at the hands of Officer Poirot. Genuinely, what is he doing as a member of the British Army here? Like, I'm... Or have we moved country? Are we in the UK? Even that doesn't make any sense, because then you've got... Um, he's wearing red trousers! He's wearing red trousers. Oh, no. He shouldn't be wearing red trousers if he's part of the British Army. It's black. Everything in this is wrong. Did they mean he's Belgian? Did they confuse Belgian and British, and he's a member of the Belgian Army? Because I think Belgium, they, I think they wore blue. I know the French army did. Because there was massive furore when they, like, in World War One, when they were considering wearing camouflage. It's like, no, we wear blue. As soon as this has become, yes, I'm selecting my battles more ca tactfully. I can only hope the captain at the station will see things with some sense. We, oui, major. He doesn't have any authority in this. Now I suggest you do your duty and escort the maidservant to the station where she can be formally charged and a sufficient punishment handed out. But she... No! That's not how anything works! It's not charge punishment, it's charge and then you have to go through the courts! And the judge is going to throw this out! What's going on? Right away. What's going on? None of this makes sense. I'm sorry, mademoiselle. This is not the outcome I expected. How is any of this legal? 
How can a how can a member of the British Army order a member of the Belgian police force to do something that this doesn't make Oh this is gonna be fun. Mama was right. We'll always pay the price for the upper class's actions. Viva la Revolution. We will do everything we can to clear your name. What can you do now? Madame said I'm guilty of a crime and I'll be punished. That's that. That's not how the law works. It's not, well, it's not how the justice system... It, well, it's not how the justice system is meant to work. A crime that was never committed. Once the truth is explained, this wrong shall be set right. Um... Oh, flip! It's even worse, is now Poirot is... Um, is doing something illegal. He is arresting someone he know that is in arresting someone innocent because he's been ordered to, which means he's he's being ordered to fought. He's being given uh, he's been given an illegal order, which means he he legally should reject this. My goodness, this is a mess. Madeline did not intend for you to be arrested. Surely you know her better than that. I should have known better than to expect anything else. Justice and fairness don't reach the likes of me. This young lady has already faced so much mistreatment at the hands of Madame Van den Bosch. I shall not allow her punishment to continue. What you saw today was not justice. In the eyes of the law, you are innocent and have been harshly treated and wrongly accused. No one will be going to jail. But that doesn't help my employment, does it? That I cannot save. But your freedom, I shall make sure of that. Well, why, why, so why is she angry at you? Because that's something to explore, and you know, if this gets a lot of publicity, all of a sudden, ooh, famous maidservant. I feel like an imposter dressed in police clothing. <laughs> what about the imposter in, I don't know what he was wearing. I was brought here today as a representative of the law, and any shred of authority I had was dashed at the hands of the major. How? How? This is a civilian matter involving civilian Belgians... How can a how how can they get to a British major when they're Belgian nobility? Okay, that there might be like a friend connection, but that means he's abusing his authority. Right, move on, move on, move on to the next case because <laughs> this is a mess. I refuse to allow justice to waver and for it to become nothing more than a hand for those that wish to play it, as and when they. Ch what? I refuse to allow justice to waver, and for it to become nothing more than a hand for those that wish to play. Oh, hand like hand of cards. Okay, as and when they choose. Oh, this is weird. This is not the first time I've seen the law bent to fit one's purpose, but it will certainly be the last time I fail to stop it. Wow. That ending was weird. <laughs> Oh. And now we're on to chapter one. Detective Poirot, I trust this finds you well. It has been many years since our paths last crossed, and while I'm sure your recollection of the events may differ from mine, I hope that receiving this letter has not rekindled a sense of animosity toward myself or the Van der Bosch name. The impression you made is something that has stayed with me since that day. It compelled me to reconsider the spoilt young lady I would have inevitably become and help shape me into the woman I wished to be. You made me see the childish and selfish girl in me that did not consider the consequences of her actions or how they may affect others. Although Maman may see the events of that day differently, I believe the compassion you showed for our mate Florette as well as the drive to uncover the truth and accept no alternative was a testament to your character and professionalism. Although I wish it were under different circumstances, your assistance is once again required and I hope you will consider this as my formal request for your service. This forthcoming weekend was due to be one full of joy and happiness at the announcement of my engagement to Gideon Demir whom I love dearly, bringing together two illustrious families, 
but it has been shadowed by deceit, extortion, and blackmail. The Van der Bosch name is being held to ransom by a mysterious party, and I am afraid I do not know who I can and cannot trust. We are holding a small gathering to celebrate our exciting news with what Maman calls the dignified elite, those that are well respected and held in high regard in both our close inner circle and society. Our private matters have always remained just that, so I fear one of those invited may be the person who is out to ruin our name, <gasps> but for reasons I cannot fathom. I have enclosed a first-class rail ticket for you to join us for the announcement, and having contacted your superiors and the correct authorities to request your assistance, which they were more than happy to grant me, I shall expect your arrival with great anticipation. There shall be a carriage waiting for you at the station to bring you directly to Nemozan House. I thank you in advance in our time of crisis. Yours respectfully, Angeline van der Bosch. So we're still in Belgium. So what authority does the British Army have? <laughs> Why isn't... Uh... This is so insane. Chapter 1, The Blackmail. I think we've... Having finished... I don't know where the save point is. <laughs> I don't know where the checkpoint is. Uh... But I do want to put the cut in. I think we'll we'll play on until we get to the next save, which I don't, th which probably will be after this. I assume. I finally arrived. My priority is to get out of this bit of cold before I freeze completely. How to avoid freezing? <laughs> uh, investigate the blackmail. I must not get distracted by the celebrations. I was brought here to uncover the identity of Mademoiselle Angeline's blackmailer, and that is exactly what I shall do. Van den Bosch are being blackmailed. I must help Mademoiselle get to the bottom of the case. How did the crime occur? When did it occur? Where did it occur? Uh, Mnemosine House. Items connected to it. He, ha, who is the culprit? What instrument was being used? Why and any documents? So we could have a look at the police orders, I suppose. But there we go. I think that's to save the writing quill. So yes, we will follow more of Hercule Poirot's journey next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching.